Join us now in the post-game press conference for Ohio State. Head coach Kevin McGuff, Mama Student Athletes, Cody McMahon, and J.C. Shelton. Coach, congratulations. Uh, a, a, a very convincing win. I'll begin with your opening statement, then we'll open up for questions uh, directed first towards student athletes. Um, you know, really proud of our team, obviously. We beat uh, an excellent team, program, coaching staff. Um, we have tremendous respect for Connecticut and all that they've accomplished um, forever. Um, and, but certainly this year, because I told the team, like, they certainly have had incredible success that no one will ever match again as a program. But they have a really good team this year. And they just started getting healthy at the re right time. So I, mean, I think we beat one of the best teams in the country today. Start right here. Thomas Costello, Langrand, Holy Land. Uh, for JC and Cody, going into this game, the talk was that you know UConn's the heavy favorite and that uh, it's kind of going to go UConn's way. What do you respond to now being on the other side of that and, and winning convincingly? Yeah, I think going into that game, you know, we, we want to stay together and keep our focus and be mentally and physically ready to go. That, that was our focus, and I don't think we shied away from that. And then, you know, we also had a ton of respect for them. They're a great team, a great program. So I think more than anything, we were, we were eager and excited to get out there. Yeah, what she said, you know, UConn is a great program, a great team, but, you know, we're a great team too. So staying together and, you know, being confident in ourselves, I feel like that really helped us a lot. In the back? <laughs> no, right. You. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in the back, back. Uh, Eden Lassie, Just Women's Sports. Let's, um, both you guys can answer this. Obviously, this team loves to play defense. You guys really hang your hat on it. Um, when things are going right and you're getting steals and diving on the floor and like feel that energy, what does it feel like to you on the court? Uh, we feed off of each other. So when one person gets a steal and one person's doing well, you know, we're all doing well. So that's what gets us going. I think that, you know, we rely on that press and to do that, we got to make shots. And once we did that and we're able to get into it, um, you know, we got excited, we got stops and then, and then we're all, we're all playing really well. So we just get excited for each other. We love seeing each other do well. So that's what makes it fun. Yeah, um, and to feed off what she said, you know, I think us being excited for each other is also what helps keep that momentum going from on the court to, you know, our deep bench, you know. There's not one person yeah. sitting down when we force a turnover, you know. Everybody's just cheering each other on and stuff like that. Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Cody, there was no one in the arena having more fun than your mother during that game. <laughs> she was right behind press row, oh leading the chance, taunting Gino. <laughs> She, at one point, she stood up and said, I'll cheer by myself. I don't care. Yeah. And when I watched, looked on the court, I don't know if you could hear her, um, but can't. you were smiling the whole time. Like, I think you were both just having a blast. So I wondered, first of all, if you could comment on what it's like to have her as a mom, yeah. and then also just how much fun you had that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I love my mom so much. You know, she's very supportive. Um, she never really was one of those who um, was very hard on me as far as basketball. She kind of just, you know, let me experience things on my own. So she never forced me to be in the gym if I didn't want to. She kind of let me, you know, um, want to do what I wanted to do. Um, so, yeah, you know, she was always just the cheerleader, the supporter for not only me, but the way she cheers for my teammates, you know, she just shows that she just loves every single one of us. Um, and as far as, you know, me smiling on the court, um, I always have fun. I always smile, um, good or bad. Um, I feel like that just helps me, you know, stay positive as well, too. So, yeah. Go over here and then right here. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN. You talked about feeding off each other, but when you're having that kind of success with the press, can you also see it in the opposition that, you know, suddenly they're kind of nervous to make passes or do things they would normally do? And, and do you feed off that, too? Absolutely. I think, you know, our goal is to, you know, make teams feel uncomfortable and speed them up a little bit. And um, when we get turnovers and finishes, that just you know gets us more excited to you know keep continue to do that throughout the game. So um, I would say absolutely. Bailey Johnson, Columbus Dispatch, for either of you guys, JC and Cody. First couple minutes, kind of played right into UConn's hands, and then after that, you guys started to get on a roll and obviously led the rest of the way. What mm -hmm. changed for you guys after those first couple minutes? Um, I think guarding. I think in transition, we got a little sloppy. So I think honestly, just talking to each other and, and staying confident in each other was our main focus and. And again, making shots and getting into our press. Kind of same for offense. You know, we got a little sloppy as well. Um, but, you know, we stayed together. We talked about what needed to be talked about. And we fixed what needed to be fixed. I'm going to go to the Zoom room real quick, and then I'll get to you, Jerry. Uh, Dan Hope, uh, go ahead. After the last game, you said, I want to play UConn so bad. Did you feel a 
different level of energy today? Just anything extra knowing that you were getting the chance to play against UConn? Who is that director, George? We didn't hear that. Uh, to Cody. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I did feel like, I guess, a little bit of different energy coming into the game. Um, like we've all mentioned, you know, UConn is a great program. They're known for so many great accomplishments and stuff like that. So I feel like coming out and being able to play UConn and, you know, come out with the win, I feel like it's really cool. Yeah, uh, Jerry Brewer, Washington Post. Uh, Cody, the, the space you had to operate, um, w were they pressing out on, on the shooters and, and that created some of the space that you had? Um, yeah, I feel like that's usually how, you know, our team is guarded, um, you know, kind of focused on our shooters. And it gives me the ability to drive and, you know, create shots for myself, but not only create shots for myself, for my teammates as well. So, yeah. Hi, Talia Minsberg, New York Times. I'd love to hear from all of you about your confidence. What was your confidence level going into this game, and how are you feeling now going into the round of eight? Yeah, I think, like I mentioned earlier, we feed off of each other. So I think seeing each other do well builds our confidence. And to be honest, we, we came to this game. Obviously, UConn's a great program, and they have a great team this year. But we came into this game expecting to win. And I think that, let alone, builds our confidence a lot. And then, obviously, throughout the game, just seeing the ball go in the basket and being able to you know, get into the defense that we want to also builds our confidence. Yeah, I feel like coming into the game, uh, you know, we all believe in each other, which, you know, helps boost all of our confidence. And we just know we thrive best when we're confident. And I mentioned that um, at halftime as well, but yeah. Go to Thomas first. Thomas Gonzalo, Land Grant, Holy Land. Um, Taylor Mike, so she's played a lot of minutes this year, and today it looked like she was hurting a little bit out there. Um, could you talk about the toughness of just Taylor and what she brought to the team tonight? She's a warrior, man. I mean, she'll she'll run through a brick wall for any of us, um, even if she's you know on one leg. So she's she's as tough as it gets, and she's an amazing player. And and we talked about the shooters and how they pull people away. She she creates driving lanes for every single person on this team because she's so dangerous offensively. So she's an incredible person, a great teammate, and um, she's tough as nails. <laughs> What she said. Very proud of Team Mike. <laughs> uh, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. For both of you, um, <coughs> why did you think you were going to win? I mean, UConn, to Coach's point, like they've done something that intimidates the crap out of a lot of opponents. There are a lot of people that get beat by UConn before the ball even tips. And do you really understand like the magnitude of sending them home early? You know, they had gone to 16 consecutive Elite Eights. I mean... You don't obviously want to come into a game expecting to lose or, you know, kind of even being nervous. I feel like we as a team, we weren't nervous. Um, you know, we looked at it as any other game, and I feel like that's really what helped us, um, you know, not to feed in, you know, the fact that they are UConn, this great program, um, and not to feed into, you know, the media and how, how much they were hyping uh, UConn up. You know, we really stayed, stayed in our lane, stayed focused, and, you know, believed in each other, and I feel like that's really what – set us apart from other teams who, like you said, you know, lose the game before it even tips off. Bailey Johnson, Columbus Dispatch. For you, JC, you talked earlier this week about Cody's fearlessness and how you've enjoyed seeing her develop this year. What can you say about her performance in a game like this? Oh my gosh, the, the level that this game was played at and how she performed was, was awesome. I mean, it speaks for itself. Um, she's an amazing player, an amazing teammate. And she's a freshman, which is crazy. So like Coach says all the time, she's just scratching the surface of what she can do. But tonight, she was outstanding. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> and this will need to be our last question. Uh, Sabrina Merchant, The Athletic. Uh, they made you know a little push at the end, cut it down to, I don't know, single digits in the third quarter. Uh, what was sort of the mentality in your huddles and the mindset of just needing to apply that final push? Yeah, I feel like when it got to that point, we were kind of just uh, making silly mistakes. Um, so kind of just regrouping and, you know, making sure we're all on the same page to finish out the game. Um, that was really it. It just took a little, you know, huddle, and that was it. All right, Cody, JC, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank Congratulations, you. and we'll thank see you tomorrow. You. Thank you. All right, the <coughs> floor is open for questions to Coach McGuff. Um, we'll go ahead and start in front with Doug. <coughs> hey, Kev, Doug Feinberg, the AP. Uh, Two-parter, first off, what does it mean to get Ohio State back to the Elite Eight for the first time since 93? And conversely, you said a little bit about it, but I mean, as a coach who's been in this game for a long time, can you put in perspective what this 14-in-a-row that UConn's done that 
probably won't ever be matched again. Yeah, so first, you know, when, when I had the opportunity to come to Ohio State, this was certainly the goal and the vision to, to go farther than um, they've been going. And, you know, it's not easy to get here, obviously. Um, but I'm really proud of our team and our program of how we've evolved to be able to get to this to this point. And like I said, I mean, I have so much respect for Gino and his staff and, and all that they've accomplished. So for us to to be able to win this game in the Sweet 16 is obviously extremely significant. And um, I, I don't know, it's like it's they're just hard to beat, um, and they're so well coached. So this is a great win for us. Lindsay. I'm going to put you on the spot because everyone's going to be asking this question. Do you think that this win officially means that the UConn dynasty is dead? I don't think so. Um, you know, they got uh, probably the best player in America sitting on the bench today. And I think, yeah, actually I was talking to Chris Daly before the game, and, and they're still continuing to get kids that fit their program. And that's what they've done better than anybody in America is they, they get kids that really fit with their program and their culture. And I, they're still getting them. I mean, they got them coming uh, in recruiting. And so I, I think they're going to continue to be one of the very top programs in college basketball. Over here. Go ahead. Uh, Eden Lassie, Just Women's Sports. Cody obviously had an amazing game today. Um, and she's been great all year. But to see her shine on this stage as just a freshman, what does that say about you know her, not only just for the rest of the tournament, but the future of the program? No, she's, she's an incredible kid. and. Um, you know, you guys see her mom in the stands, but it's like I'm coaching her mom every single day. So, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, she's, I haven't been around, I mean, a player in a long time. She's got such a joy for the game. I mean, she loves to play the game. And, I, you know, I watched her in AAU in high school. You could tell that she was very talented, um, but I was really shocked at how hard she practices. She practices hard every day, and she really works at it, which, gives me great optimism that we're just still kind of scratching the surface of the player she's going to end up being. Over here. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN. As you're going through the scout for this game, did you anticipate that you could have the kind of success with your pressure that you had in the first half? Well, I, 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 I was telling the team all week, is like, you can't let UConn walk the ball up and execute in the half court for 40 minutes. They're going to pick you apart. They're going to backdoor you, and they're going to get too many easy baskets. So I said, hey, the key is going to be our ability to disrupt them. And, and we certainly were effective. Um, we, we played really hard in the press, and we executed really well. And I thought we executed some disruptive things in the half court as well. Coach, Matthew Walter from the next. Do you feel like your win over Indiana in the Big Ten tournament, just the way you guys made that comeback, gave you some momentum coming into this tournament? And just how can you you know take the things you learned in that tournament and you're applying them going forward now playing in this sort of Two games, short turnaround kind of situation. Yeah, um, I think just the Big Ten. I mean, we didn't we didn't play well in the final versus a really great Iowa team. We know that, um, but we played Michigan, we played Indiana, and we had two significant wins. And it was also like we brought JC back, so we got her back on the court and started to get the team in the sort of rhythm that we started the year with. And so I do think that was kind of a a, a starting point to us getting back to playing the way we're capable of playing. We go to the Zoom room. Uh, Dan Hope, go ahead. With Kevin, I mean, obviously you've been at Ohio State for 10 years. This is the first time you've gotten this far in the NCAA tournament. Just what do you think it is about this team this year that's allowed you all to have this unprecedented success? <laughs> well, we certainly have some really talented players, um, but I think more than anything, our culture um, and the way these kids love to be around each other has been the key for us. And, you know, we've had so many comeback uh, come from behind wins, and a lot of it has to do with when, when things go south, you know, people start pointing fingers and so forth, you have no chance to make a comeback. But that never happens with this group. They stay together, they support each other, um, and, and that's really just be a lot that has to do with we've got great kids in the program and, and just great chemistry. Jerry, we we'll go Jerry in back. <laughs> yeah, Jerry Brewer, Washington Post. Uh, Kevin, when you, you guys were down 10 to 2, um, mostly because you weren't making shots. But there's a couple times when the press was on and they turned it over. I mean, did you sense if you could get into some kind of offensive rhythm that those opportunities were going to be there? Yeah, I, I told them. <laughs> I called timeout. It's like, we're getting good shots. We just got to make them. And, um, and you could see the press was going to have a chance to be effective. But once again, you can't get in the press if you don't make shots. And so once we started making some shots and were able to set the press, then I think we kind of got the game going the way we wanted it. 
Um, this is just the latest in a variety of upsets this tournament. Obviously, two one seeds going out. Why do you think that parity is growing at this rate? Like forever, it was UConn and everyone else. And then also, how much is UConn responsible for forcing everyone else to get better? Yeah, I, I think um, for for many years there were ten players coming out of high school that were here, and then the rest of them were were way behind. And you know, ten, and UConn was getting three or four of them every year, so they just had. You know, and they had a great culture, and so they're adding these great players. But now, you know, like J.C. Sheldon wasn't ranked. She wasn't in McDowell's All-American. She wasn't even ranked in the top 30, I don't think. I mean, she's more like a top 50, 60 type player. Um, now, she's a, an exceptional player, of course, but there's just a lot more good players. And so now they're getting spread around. And then there's a lot more programs around the country that are really committed to women's basketball. Thanks for your time, Coach Thomas Costello, Lane Grant, Holy Land. I asked a question to JC and Cody, but you talk about Taylor Mikesell's toughness, especially today. It looks like she's obviously going through. Yeah, I mean, we we we've we've ex especially with JC Madison being out, we've asked so much of Taylor, and she's done everything you could possibly do to help this program, and and so you know we've we've worn her out a little bit, and so um, she she was obviously a little worn out today, but she still you know I thought she was really good on the defensive end and just found ways to contribute and. And, you know, just by her being on the court, it spaces the court and allows people like Cody to really attack in space. And so she's a great player and a great kid. Other questions? We'll give you one more. Thomas Costello, Langer and Holy Land. Um, how tough was it in the last few days to battle that kind of aura around UConn before even playing them? How tough was that? Yeah, you know, obviously, like we've, we've all discussed, you know, they have such an incredible program. But I, I felt a sense of confidence with our kids, and I thought they were they were really um, focused. And you know, we, we did a couple different things defensively, and our kids. And we had short notice. We just kind of worked on this the last couple of days, and our kids executed really well. We were really good coming out of timeouts, and that, that's when I could tell like we were really locked in and focused. And I don't think you know we were we we knew how good they were, but we weren't caught up in that. We were just focused on being the best version of ourselves and trying to beat a great team. Go into the Zoom room. Uh, Christopher, he Christopher Heil, go ahead. Hey, Coach. This is Chris Heidel from Purvis from Radio in Baltimore. Congratulations on the win tonight. What does it mean for your program getting to the Elite Eight? And also, what does it mean for the Big Ten having two schools right now are in the Elite Eight? Yeah, I mean, this has been an incredible season um, for the Big Ten. It's as deep and as talented as it's ever been since I've been here. And and so I, I'm not surprised that we have people who've advanced. And I, I think one thing in particular, we have teams that can really score the ball in the Big Ten. And I think that's a big part of, of everybody advancing. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN. You talked about kind of the big picture. This is what you intended to do at Ohio State. But the emotion in the, the moment you're running over to the student section on the op or to the fan section on the opposite side, what was that like? Well, it was great. I wanted to you know get with my wife and, and kids and share that moment. So that was really special. I mean, she's my biggest supporter and biggest fan. So um, that was a awesome opportunity to, to kind of share that as a family. Um, so that was really cool. Coach Matthew Walter with the next. No matter who wins this next game, five of the eight teams in the Elite Eight will have played in their conference tournament championship game. Just how much does that phrase, it's not how you start, how it's how you finish, apply to not only every team around the country, but especially with your team because you started hot and you got cold. Just yeah. how important, you know, how yeah. you finish. <coughs> I mean, I think it's certainly reflective of playing well at the end of the year. If you're playing well at the tournament, you're probably playing well. I think one interesting thing, too, and I'd love for somebody to look at this closer because I feel like in men's basketball, because a lot of their tournaments run to the Sunday right before they start, that you go to the finals and some of those teams come out of that worn out and tired. Whereas, you know, we have a little bit of time to, to get some rest and, and kind of sharpen some things up before the tournament. Yeah, and uh, that unfortunately is our time. Coach, thank you very much. Right, thank you. We will see you tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's right. Like Purdue men. Purdue men. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're also like not Yeah. <laughs> Coach, thank you very much. Appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah.